So thanks for joining this recorded session on an introduction to GWAS part one. In this session, we're going to be covering off the basics of genome-wide association studies. So what are they? They are a hypothesis-free study of genetic variation across the entire human genome. We are testing for genetic associations at millions of points across the genome with continuous traits or binary traits, cases and controls, the presence and absence of disease. We're going to be focusing on common genetic variation. So these are genetic variants that have a small effect, but are reasonably frequent in the population. And one of the very important things to keep in mind with GWAS is that these are tests of indirect association. And that's been depicted in this cartoon down the bottom, taken from this 2014 paper. These little red marks are SNPs that we have genotyped or genetic variants that we have genotyped or we have imputed. So these are what we have measured. And on the left hand side, it is indicating that this uh, genetic variant that has been measured is doing the work. It is changing the form of a protein or the function of a protein. It is changing gene expression. It is changing things that are regulating genes. Um, it's doing the work. On the right hand side, we have an example of indirect association. So these little red marks are again, SNPs or genetic variants that we have measured, but they are correlated or associated with this blue genetic variant that we have not measured. And it is the blue one that is doing the work. So if we look at the uh, alleles that are here at this locus, we are gonna get an association because they are correlated with something that matters. But it itself, variation at that point in the genome isn't what affects the outcome. We're getting an association because of this correlation among our genetic variants. This is called linkage disequilibrium. They are not completely independent of each other they're correlated. So why do genome-wide association studies? Uh, so in this uh, flow diagram, we kind of have two branches. There may be other reasons, but I think this does a nice job of capturing some of the main reasons that people are interested in doing genome-wide association studies. As we look at genetic variation and their association with complex trait, there is a hope that we will be able to identify some further understanding of what is the biology that underpins these complex mechanisms that then um, are expressed as complex traits. So if it's a disease outcome that you're looking at, you might then illuminate new therapeutic targets or biomarkers. Uh, we might be able to advance prevention methods um, we might be able to identify new ways of alleviating distress. Alternatively, we also have um, information that is very individualized. And so as we realize that some people are at higher risk and some people are at lower risk, we might be able to personalize our uh, medicine. We might be able to personalize our interventions. We might have a better way of being able to identify people uh, at an earlier point in time, and so therefore change their therapeutic interventions, we would be able to perhaps give a clearer idea of uh, prognosis, like the development of severity of their um, particular condition. So it's about optimizing things for the particular individual. And there's a lot of work that's been done with polygenic risk scores in this space. And what we're gonna do is regression. We'll do regression at every single point in the genome that we have measured. So millions of regressions. If the trait is quantitative, then we'll do linear regression. The X, the predictor is the genetic variant, the SNP, and the beta will be the effect of that SNP on the outcome. So we have genetic information from our biological father and our biological mother. Take a particular locus where uh, it may be a G or an A allele. If we have coded the G as the effect allele, then every single individual will either be a zero, a one, or a two, depending on how many copies of the G allele they carry. And then we're gonna run a linear regression 
on all of those individuals who are coded 0, 1 and 2 at that locus. And we do that for every single locus. If the beta is essentially a 0, then there's no evidence of association. If the beta is greater than 1, then the G allele is associated with a higher score on that trait. If the beta is less than 0, then the G allele is associated with a lower score on that trait. So if our outcome is binary, so a case control study, looking at disease, the presence or absence of disease, we'll do a logistic regression. Uh, let's take the same locus. So people are either an A or a G um, at that locus uh, or a combination of both. Um, and we just change the outcome. And this uh, figure here is indicating controls as circles, cases as squares, Individuals carrying two A alleles are clear. Uh, individuals who are heterozygous, so they got an A and a G are light blue. And those who carry two G alleles are dark blue. And we can see that there's more blue happening for the cases, indicating that the G allele is associated with the disease. But we'll do a test, a statistical test, just to check. And we'll run a logistic regression. If we take the logarithm of that, then we get terms that are like, a linear regression. Um, so in this case, the alpha is the log odds of being a control. Alpha plus beta is the log odds of being a case. And the beta becomes the difference in log odds of cases compared to controls. So if we take the exponent of the beta, that gives us the difference in odds or the odds ratio. So your program that you run may give you output that is the logistic beta, or it might give you output that is the odds ratio. Um, if it's the odds ratio, then your odds ratios that are greater than one indicates that that G allele is associated with an increased risk. If the odds ratio is less than one, then the G allele is associated with a decreased risk. Um, a simple check, to, if you're not sure what your program has given you, is check the distribution of your effect and if it goes below zero, then you've got a logistic beta. If it stops at zero, then you've got an odds ratio. Now, in our quality control session, we were talking about looking at our data for relatedness. Um, so if you've got huge studies, because we do have huge sample sizes in GWAS, then there's probably going to be some kind of relationship structure in your data. Um, maybe you've got 10,000 um, cases, sorry, 10,000, maybe, maybe you've got 10,000 individuals and there's say 10 that are related, you can just drop them, that's not going to massively Im impact your sample size. But if you think of the history of genetic um, studies and collection of data, there's a lot of information that is very rich that has been collected on families. So we don't just want to be picking one person from that family and keeping that person in these genome-wide association studies. Instead, we can actually model the relationship structure using uh, linear mixed models. And in that case, we just simply add a term, a random effect term to our regression equation represented here by this capital G. So our beta is still our fixed effect of the, of the allele. And the G is now our genetic relationship random effect. And that's going to be operationalized with a genetic relationship uh, matrix or GRM. So in doing so, if you think about collecting data on millions of variants across the genome and hundreds of thousands of individuals, to do a full genetic relationship matrix is going to be huge. It is going to be computationally and memory demanding, and we currently are not going to have the resources to be able to efficiently uh, use such a large matrix in our analysis. So what is typically done is we take a subsample of SNPs, and that is what our genetic relationship matrix is constructed on. And that gives a good representation of relationship, genetic relationship in our data. Uh, one of the other uh, things to be aware of is if you have your SNP of interest in this 
part of the um, this term in the model. And it also goes into your uh, random effect, then you're kind of double dipping. So a way around this is to use the leave one chromosome out option. So this is something that's implemented by the programs that you'll be using, or at least you hope it's being implemented by the programs that you're using and you don't have to manually do this. Um, but it essentially creates this genetic relationship matrix on the chromosomes that don't include the chromosome that you're currently testing for the effect. Um, so if you are thinking about what is genome-wide association studies, taking it back to the original question, we are essentially doing regression, whether it's linear or logistic or including a random effect for our relationship structure within our data. Uh, and we're just doing that all across the genome millions of points in the genome.